By God, it's still daylight out. Yep. <laughs> we just got out of the shallows. Not like actually in the water, just the movie. Yeah. I got I gotta be honest, that was one of the best romantic comedies I've seen in a long time. What? Yeah. I mean, you guys know me. I'm not a big fan of romantic comedies, but but still, this this I have to say was was very good. Um, Explain. All right, so the the story of a girl. Uh, fucking, I can't keep a straight face while saying it. Damn it. Okay, <laughs> it's the story of a girl and her literal lovebird, Steven Siegel. <laughs> <laughs> the two of them meet on this tiny rock, and uh, they 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 fall in love with each other. But because they have both have injuries, yeah. But they uh, the meet the the um, I think it's uh, is it Stephen or yeah it's Stephen's Stephen's ex girlfriend uh, the great white shark is really pissed off at them. So naturally, it's just kind of a, a ba battle of the exes uh, between her the seagull and. Uh, the the white shark but you know the weird thing about this romantic comedy i've never seen it done before but one of the couple leaves for like the second half of the movie and then it's just like the two girlfriends going at it uh so i guess i i don't i don't know why you do that i think i think steven could have contributed a lot more in the second half of this movie but but still um you know, it's it's a really it's it's really good. The uh, the shark and uh, Nancy have very good chemistry. <laughs> it's um it's not nearly as irritating um, as most other romantic comedies are, and uh, it, the comedy is really good. I mean, uh, the shark especially had some really good jokes. God, God damn it! Okay, <laughs> you're done. You're done. Jesus Christ! I didn't know you not. I did not know you had that in you. <laughs> okay. F fuck you. No, I can't look at this the same again. <laughs> All right, the shallows. Yeah, that... It's an it's the millionth fucking shark movie. Okay, how many but, of these goddamn things can they make? But it's a good one. At least from at least from my view, yeah. I think it's I think it's a fair shark movie. I can't say it's like amazing. It's not. It's I didn't say. Okay. Okay. It's. I'll. I don't think it's I'll supposed give it, to be. I'll amazing. give it a pass. I'll give it a pass. Complete pass. It's good, solid, but I've seen far too many of these to be impressed at this point. Yeah, he's seen a ton of the a ton of, but it, you've seen a lot of the B movie stuff. This oh, was actually let's, let's well made. This, let's put it this way: anyone anyone here who's seen James Rolfe's top forty shitty shark movies, I I think I've seen like half the ones on that list. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go watch that video. It's a great video, but it's just he goes down the goes down the list of all these terrible shark movies, and I've seen so many of them. The, re the reason for that was because when I was a kid, my parents wouldn't let me watch Jaws. They said, you're not watching it because you will never want to go back into the water again. So being the stupid kid I was, I danced around the mud puddle and watched whatever other shark movies I could find. Shitty or not. I was too, I was too young to know the difference. So... And to this day, I'm not afraid of open water, so joke's on them. Because we live in fucking Minnesota where there are lakes everywhere. Yeah. The most we have to worry about here is, like, snapping turtles. That's seriously it. Yeah. And what's the other fish? Mu musky. I, you only have to worry about muskies if you have tiny dogs who are swimming. Because then they'll eat them. Or kids, I guess. Nah, kids are fine. Okay. Because they aren't usually out in the open water. But back to this. When, uh, when we first, or at least when I first saw the trailer for this, I actually wasn't expecting much at all because it just looked very. It looked so similar to Jaws, and to its, and to its credit, this does try and pay a little bit of homage. Um, God, I can't talk today. <laughs> to Jaws, and I thought this was going to be like ridiculous, 
over the top shtick, which some of it was, but only involving the effects around the shark. It's got more in it's got more in line with like 127 hours than it does Jaws. That it does, which I which I actually appreciate it for. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the trailer, uh, Blake Lively is a surfer who found a very who is surfing at a very secret beach in Mexico. Super secret. They can't say the name. You know why? Because it's called Great, Great White, White Bay. Bay. <laughs> that's gonna. That's not gonna make people want to swim in it. Great White Bay. If what, what was your thing that you said to me during it? I said. I said the name. The name of it's Great White Bay. The reason they don't. They, the reason they keep it a secret is because people aren't gonna want to swim in it otherwise. No, but you created some like weird rhyme. Like Great White Bay. The they'll take them away or something. Oh, I guess I I, and I, un, I unintentionally made it rhyme, but it's like, it's called Great White Bay, otherwise everyone would stay away. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Blake Lively, she goes to this beach, she starts surfing, fun, 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 and, but there is a fucking psychotic shark that pops up, and this, this, this shark is relentless. It has the mind of a serial killer. I mean, okay, let's let's put it this way. It's this happens this happens pretty early on. But when the shark attacks and her only uh her only f uh surface of safety is a dead whale, uh you think the shark would kind of ignore her at that point and just kind of eat the whale and everything. No, it um grabs the tail the gap grabs the tail of the whale and drags drags her out I don't. I don't know where it takes her. She even. She well, even. Well, ju well, just deeper waters. I guess it just takes her to deeper water. She straight up says, "Where, where are, are you taking, taking me? me? Like, what do you expect it to answer you? Uh, whatever." So, anyways, but then the then the shark swims out, swims back, and like rams the whale just as an attempt to get her off of it. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Th okay, that that can lead to some downsides. But yeah, she's knocked off, injured. And her only, um, her only place of, like, solace or resting wherever is a giant rock that, um, that just barely goes over the top of the surface, and it's all a struggle for survival. Yep. And, and it's there where she meets Steven Seagal. God damn it. You've, you've ruined this. Oh, I ruined it. I think I made it better. Shut up. Seriously, yeah. seriously though, um, it it is kind of cute to, to see the two of them together. The the seagulls got like a. I thought she would have treated. I thought she treated it more like a pet scenario. Well, it it is. I just made up the romantic I, comedy bit. Um, I was now actually no joke. The whole time I'm I was there, I was waiting for her to uh, to use the bird as bait. That no, I was I was thinking that too. I thought she would have just slit his throat and then tossed him out into the middle of the sea, toss him out as a diversion, and then have her swim back. Yeah, and she's when there's a mo there's supposed to be a cute moment where she's trying to fix its broken wing. And and you and I both thought the same thing. It's like one, two, three, and like break the neck and then throw it out. No, no, no. I thought that the shark was gonna just pop up for another jump scare. Somehow, one, two, three, click, and then that'd he be, like pops be, up from behind. That'd be pretty amazing. Where the shark just like pops out, it's like yoink, pulls the pulls the seagull out, and then it's like you bastard, or she like jumps back. Oh in. my god! You <laughs> You killed Steven! You bastard! Oh no, she jumps in. Wilson! <laughs> Steven! <laughs> Steven! <laughs> but no, she she helps the bird and then and then I, again I thought she was gonna use it as bait. She puts it on a broken part of her surfboard. Sets uh, it. Uh, 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 too specific, but it's one of the other guy's surfboards who tries to help her. Yeah. She sets sets it out to sea, and I thought I thought, oh, now you're using it as bait, you bitch. But nope, the uh, the shark completely ignores it. Well, cause it, cause that's why I think it has the mind of a serial killer because of one singular target, and do all and complete all this work just to get to your target. Yeah, I. <laughs> I think they try to establish that the shark has a vendetta against humans because there's a 
there's a part in the movie where uh, these surfer dudes come out, and one of them's got a GoPro camera. You see, you see this in the trailer. One of them's got a GoPro camera, and he uh, naturally the sharks go after go after them because I think because I think it's only really hates humans. Uh, goes after them. And the, she grabs the GoPro camera, and then she's playing a little bit, and you see the shark actually, like, come and, you know, eat the camera. Yeah. Well, not, well, not eat the camera, because she gets it, but, like, you know, the shark kind of... Uh, the uh, the approach to the eating. Yeah. So, and then she rewinds it and zooms in a little bit, and we see that it's got something s sticking out of the side it's got, of the it's got a, It's got a hook. Yeah. So it's like... And From she, Fisherman. And she says, someone tried to get you. So and really, that's all the explanation we get. I think this. I think this shark is just after people. Possibly, we, there's no other explanation. But then again, it doesn't need an explanation because it's an animal. It's a predator. It's a beast. It eats. But it's, it's, to a levels of ridiculous. Like really. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. And, I think. I think this sh again. I. Th I thought the thing this movie wasn't going to be able to establish is why is this shark uh, just, you know, why is this shark sticking so close to her when it when in reality I think it would get bored with itself and just kind of leave, you know, find find some other food. And and I thought that the only reason it wouldn't leave is because she's consistently bleeding. At least that's what I picked up from the trailers. No, and, and, she, and she was. There and was it, she was still consistently losing blood. It's true. It's true. She is still consistently mo losing blood. So I would imagine that uh, you know that would keep the shark around. But it gets what what makes the movie s to the past the point of ridiculous to the point of okay, what the hell are you doing here? Is that there's a whale, a dead whale. I, I, we said this earlier, but there's a dead whale. It, its carcass is sitting out in the middle of the ocean for ever. Why? For a long, long time. Why would a shark give two shits about a human when there's a fucking Thanksgiving dinner way over there? Maybe he's getting sick of the dinner. He wants a little variety. He gets the dinner. Maybe now he wants some salad. <laughs> no. Oh, no, no. The shark wants Mexican food. <laughs> it got Mexican food. Yep, it yeah, got Mexican uh, food. Now it's got to wash it down with. Oh some yeah, American. one of the one of the false hopes in this. So there's a ton of like uh, false hope or whatever during this when she and it's all when she's perched on the rock. There's a drunk. Uh, there's a drunk Mexican guy, and this takes place in Mexico. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's not anything. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Just hammered guy with a bottle of tequila in his hand, and. Yeah, she signals to him to go over to her bag. Big shock, he fucking robs her. Yeah, like, he steals Hor her phone. Horror cliche number seventeen: establish piece of shit to immediately die. Exactly, and that's and that's what we were both exactly thinking. Um, because then he, then he sees her surfboard out. He's still on the water. he's still he's still drunk, so he's like, oh. Maybe I can pawn this or whatever. Yeah. So he tries stealing her surfboard, which is in the which is like still a decent way offshore, but too far for her to get. Yep. And then, as soon as he goes in, tries swimming back, he gets chopped, chop, chomped, not chopped, in half. No, he does get chopped. He it, it, he is literally sliced in half. It is not like it's not like he lost an arm or a leg. He is sliced in half. His legs are on one part, and his and his upper body is on another part. But it was still satisfying to see him die. How the asshole. hell did a shark do that? I don't know. It's like, it starts to remind me of this other monster movie, Crocodile, where he's like, eh, 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 that's a crocodile, all right? See, crocodile usually finishes her meal. She ain't doing this because she's hungry. She's on a rampage. <laughs> I guess, yeah, the shark's just... Just pissed. Got, gotta love them hillbillies. Yeah. Uh, um. But yeah, that was a that was sort of a funny scene, and there are a few bits in this that are actually kind of ridiculous. Okay. Overall, this is not this is not bad. This is not bad at all. I actually liked it, but there are some ridiculous bits in it that can make it seem silly at points. Yeah. It's kind of it's it's caught for me at a weird angle between uh, too too silly to take seriously and almost too serious that it's boring. 
I didn't find it boring at all. A lot, one of the big things that I liked about this is that in a day and age where there's so many, um, there's so many just body count horror movies, mm -hmm. this one actually did rely on like psychology and suspense and atmosphere. Yeah, it did. This is actually a very, very, very decently directed movie. The cinematography is great. This, the ocean in this looks fantastic. Yeah, it does. I thought I wish they would have done a little bit more with it because it's like it's it's very inviting blue waters, and and it's also pretty clear. Like you can you can actually see the surface underneath it kind of clear. And I thought it would be kind of cool to see more of the shark like circling her. It it showed a decent amount. Not not enough though, or at least at least it didn't do it. It didn't do it to me much more effectively than that. Okay, it worked for me effectively because this this is pretty much Jaws meets Castaway. This that's exactly meets 127 hours. Actually, yeah, that's actually that's a better comparison. It's Jaws meets 127 hours, and but the Jaws um, edition of this, I thought it was actually a decent homage because they don't show that much. Of, but the reason that Jaws for and I fucking love Jaws. The reason that Jaws was so was so good was because it let the suspense kick in and it actually let it seep into the audience instead of just blatantly instead of just constantly showing full shark full shark full, full shark until the point of boredom it it actually popped up when it was necessary. I felt that that was the same with this. It actually did show it showed the presence of the shark and you didn't need the whole thing you didn't need the image of the whole thing in order to feel the presence because it's been instilled for a while. And as well as, um, but when he did show up, he did, he actually did look fucking terrifying. And everybody complains about Jaws looking fake in the first one. At least that had a decent amount of practical effects. This shark, the only disappointment, he's very much CG. Yeah, it's he's got almost a he's got almost like a that sort rubbery. of rubbery texture to but then, him. But then again, they're supposed to look rubbery a little bit because they're well, fish. Well, I mean, like in an unnatural kind of way. Yeah, that's what I mean. He did so look unnecessary at points, but when he didn't look rubbery, he did look fucking terrifying. Yeah, and I granted I like people. People who have their specific animal fears, mine are sharks, his are wolves, so he wasn't too much scared by, like, just the idea of a shark. I am. Well, I can I can absolutely understand the idea of being, being stuck with a shark, uh, why that's scary. It's just that for me, I don't know, it just, for me, I feel like the shark was acting too, like you said, almost acting too deliberately like a serial killer rather than an actual shark. And, but then again, and that to me almost made the movie a little too, like I said, a little too, a little too silly to take seriously, but it still has a very grounded, serious tone to it. So then it kind of makes the movie a little bit, uh, Boring but I, but times. I no but I actually did really like the serious tone of it because with that serious tone it's sort of for me it sort of translates into the seriousness that Nancy is going through. Oh by the way Blake Lively she actually did have a good performance in this not amazing like a lot of people are saying us but she was actually really good. It felt believable. It felt like she was actually going through this but holy shit Shit, she looks hot in this. And the camera notices it as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, there are a few, like, sort of pervy shots, I guess. Um, there, again, the director was a male. Well, I'm assuming the director was a male, because well, then again, I wouldn't 100% know. Full-on French name. But even then, you know, to be fair, it's the beach. She's surfing. Obviously, she's going to be bikini. in a bikini. Obviously, she's going to be in a, a bikini. Is that really unrealistic? No, it is not. Okay. But damn, she looks good. And there's not. <laughs> it's not like you get full frame ass. You know. Yeah, all that. And, he, and, and it and certainly doesn't go too far. And with luckily, it. they kept the dignity of her wearing um, a wetsuit top. Because that because that would also be believable. Because the winter, the ocean is fucking freezing. <laughs> Well, maybe for you guys. I'm a polar bear. I, sw I swam in with nothing but a suit. 
Oh, I whenever I go to the beach down on the coast, I still wear um, I still just wear a swimsuit as well. But if you're out for hours on end in the middle of the ocean, where it's where it still tends to be cold, you're gonna you're gonna get cold. And we're going into a territory that we don't know that well. Yeah. But um. Yeah, Spe she, she, speaking of a territory we don't know too well, there, yeah, there's kind of a debate between him and I about how tides work, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google it pretty, pretty quick after this review. But again, Minnesota, south of Canada, so we don't we, necessarily know too much I've about only, tides. I've only been to the ocean once in my life. So. I've been there a handful of times, but I still wouldn't know the specifics about tides. Okay, so so one of the major things about this movie is the tide, which makes sense. She's on a she's on a rock. Uh, at night, there's the low tide, so it's the high, So the rock's going to be the highest above the water it's going to be, and the shark's not going to be able to get to her. That's good. Well, then when the next day comes, well, high tide's coming, which means the water's going to rise above the rock, and she's going to be in the... I actually shark Shark, shark territory. That's I will say that is smart. That yes, is yes, because, yes, yes. Because for me, while watching the trailer, the first thing I thought is, why don't you just wait it out? Really, eventually it'll it'll swim away and leave you alone. Well, it, and, and absolu how, and, but, it absolutely doesn't in this movie. Yeah, but and just with that general thought, you you're still stuck with no food or no water, baking in the sun, so you're gonna get dehydrated. Okay, and I, of course I th I didn't I didn't also know this was a super secret beach, so I thought for sure if somebody would show up, but nope, you can't, no, I guess not. Anyway, but okay, so the t so the tide rising is a good good way to add suspense to it because obviously now she's on a time limit. She's got to got to get to uh, got to get to this buoy that's like a hundred of uh, how many yards away did she say it's 30 to 40 30 to 40 yards away okay so it's a long a bit of a decent swim with a shark that's utterly relentless but i thought to myself okay so the the rocks like way above way above the tide 25 minutes then the movie says this 25 minutes before high tide now i thought the way tides work is that it's it's gradual, like as the as the day day goes on, as hours go by, the tide slowly starts to rise, and when the you know the day's over, the tide slowly goes back down. I didn't think that it suddenly, oh high tide, then the water just immediately rises, and then low tide, the water just immediately drops. I I really thought it was all just kind of gradual. And I think that is something that they try and uh, look at, but what you're saying is that the movie is describing either one way or another. I think they're still describing it as, little, as it increasing and decreasing little by little, but I think their description is um, 25 minutes until the highest point of tide. But but that's but that's what I'm saying. Looking looking at the rock, looking at the rock that she's sitting on, it still looks like the it still looks at the same level as it was hours beforehand. Uh, I I didn't recognize that. I thought that it was still like the place where she was resting at. I thought it was level, like perfectly level with the water when it was at that point. It, That's how I saw it, and not completely buried. Okay, I, I didn't, I, I didn't see it that way. But it's, it's more just a minor thing. I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad the tide thing is there. It definitely does help the movie stay interesting, at least for, for long enough to keep, to keep your interest. Speaking of, the character in this movie is just okay, not bad. You're not, you're not like a lot of horror movies where this is usually just some kind of annoying bitch. Un unlike, un. Any unlikable, unlikable idiot. Yeah, you know we said before the horror cliche of establishing a piece of shit just to have something horrible happen to them. That's the lead in most other ho crappy horror movies. Yeah, and while and while I won't say this character is brilliant, I won't say she's uh, you know uber interesting. She's or, better than most. She's certainly better than most. She I didn't I didn't wish. For horrible things to happen to her. Exactly. I we we wanted to see her get out of this, and that's the main that's the main mission that you need for this kind of movie is to be able to get behind the character, get behind their motives, and actually see them and actually want to see them live. 
Yeah. There was one weird, weird thing with her, though. Like, when she's got a moment to herself, after the initial shark attack, and she gets to the rock, and she's ble she, you know, she's got a big gash in her leg because the shark took a chunk out of her, so she's like, okay, we're just gonna add some Novocaine, and you're not gonna feel the stitches at all. She's a medical, she's a med school student, and she was sort of trying to rehearse to herself what procedure would be done when giving a patient stitches. Yeah. Of course, I'm thinking to myself, mm, I don't think that works. I, what? Really, I I thought I thought that she was just pretending she gave herself Novocaine or even or even more ridiculous. I thought she just had Novocaine in her necklace. Like you just carry that around with you for the hell of it. K- kind of like the Thorazine from Ghostbusters. Yeah. What? So, okay, but it, it, no, she's just like, she's just rehearsing it to herself, and she uses part of her necklace to, uh, stitch herself. She uses part of her, part of her necklace, her earring, which, again, reminiscent of 127 hours. Mm Mm-hmm. She's like, you know, resourceful and everything. Another remnant, re, re, (laughs) remnant. More from 127 Hours is when she finds the GoPro camera, she does start, you know, saying her goodbyes to her mm. family and everything. And But uh, but unlike 127 Hours, she doesn't, she just uses it as, for one thing and one thing only, to send for help because she actually has the opportunity to use yep. it. As opposed to 127 it's, Hours where it's mostly used as acting fuel and, um, don't... Don't cut me off. Uh, acting fuel and uh, sort of mugging. Well, I was going to say comedy, too. That's funny. Good but- morning, Canyonville, USA. Yeah. I love that bit. Uh, she, so basically, she uses the GoPro as a modern-day message in a bottle. And it's also it's it's also a scene that opens up that the movie opens with, but you don't know. You don't know what it is or what it means. And I thought I thought it was going to be... I thought it was stupid at first first time because uh it's like oh so you jump just, scare well it, a, it's a jump scare immediately starting with a jump scare um also i thought that it kind of spoils the movie for you like oh so we know who's gonna die and we know that something's gonna happen to them and i just i just hate when movies do that unless no. unless you can unless you're smart about it and you can actually use that to play with the audience's expectations which I guess it kind of did because, but then again, the trailer showed the two of the three people who die in this. Yeah, it also shows the her on the buoy with one of the major like uh, finale moments of the movie, God, where hate, she gets knocked off of it. Yeah, I hate when trailers do that. Yeah, tra- he can't stand trailers nowadays because of that. Yeah, we didn't get very many good trailers. We got the Ghostbusters one again. Well, we got we got the second version of the Ghostbusters trailer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna just go. Nobody panic. Don't but don't nobody touch the ghost. Really? <laughs> yeah, I hate mm, selfie sticks. I can't get too mad at that though because granted, there's a lot of things that were trends in the first Ghostbusters movie that are exclusive to the '80s. So, all right. So we can, I can, I can lend you a few tr- modern day trends in this Ghostbusters film. But regardless, it's not gonna save the movie. We're still gonna see it, just so we can say that we saw it and have our opinion based off of that. I'm really not looking forward to it. I'll pay, but but one trailer that I did saw that I really, really, really wanted to see, also fellow horror movie. It's called Don't Breathe. It's by... It's said it's from the creators of Evil Dead. And I like it because it has a somewhat simple scenario, sort of like this one, but with a few extra twists. These kids break into a blind guy's house to try and steal money from him, but he's like... But he's like some former operative or whatever, and... And blind. Yeah. I thought I said he was blind. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. F- steal money from a blind guy. Oh, okay. But yeah, he kills one of them, and it's a su- it's a race for survival for the other two to get out of his house before he kills them. Which, granted, I can't say I I I don't know how that's necessarily horrific because it's fucking scary because you can't make a sound 
and this guy has a gun. First of all, sound isn't the only way blind people can detect you. They're kind of got, they, they got all their senses besides their sight. Uh, Which makes it even more terrifying because the kids, because the kids in there have the, to. The only reason I think it's not terrifying, not because, not because I don't think you can build atmosphere with that and have plenty of jump scares. You can still have build up, build atmosphere when you're in a house. What I'm saying is, is that I don't care about the lives of these kids. You broke into their house and you threatened him at gunpoint. I think at that point you deserve to die. We'll have to see. That's what I'm trying to say. In this in this movie, this punk ass shark thinks that this beach belongs to him, and she just comes. She's just looking for a relaxing vacation from med school, and he's all like, "Fucking humans, this is your fault that I got this hook stuck in me." <sighs> Asshole but, shark. But then again, I don't think that was his beach because the two surfers from earlier said there are no sharks around here. And then, it's, wah, wah. It's called Great White. Uh, okay, the name. The name of the. We're just kidding about the Great White Bay thing. The. They're, they never give the name at ne all. They never give the name, but that's my head canon, Is that that's what it's called? And Great they just, White Bay. They just refuse to say it because they don't want to believe that there's sharks there. But that's the only one there. If there were sharks, then they would have actually shown sharks. Which, why aren't there more sharks? There's a fucking whale there. There should be there should be a lot of sharks. But then again, I, th this is just random thought. Could be wrong. They might like their... F they still might like their food fresh instead of rotten and already chomped at. Mm, that's... That's putting a lot... That's putting a lot of assumption on this hey, shark. Is that just a just a thought. Just hell, a thought. maybe this shark is, really is an asshole. Like not just to humans, but to everyone. Like maybe to his to his fellow shark friends. He's just this pissy, whiny little shit. Is like I'm gonna get those humans one day. <laughs> this shark should have its own spinoff. <laughs> yeah, it needs and bring back Steven. <laughs> Steven and the shark. He'll be it'll it'll be great. Steven and the shark. It's a perfect title. Yep. Someone make that TV show. Yep. Ugh. It makes and it makes sense why why it it gets a, why it goes after her specifically because it's the it's it, it's Steven's ex-girlfriend. It's like you tried you tried <laughs> to take him from me, so now I have to kill you. <laughs> uh, okay, one more thing before um before anything else, there is one painfully obvious jo uh, Jaws moment. It's when she's on the buoy and um, she's trying to light up flares to signal for help for from a from a freighter ship, which yeah. was, which was turned sideways. I don't Honestly, know. Honestly, it's gonna it's gonna take you till morning for it to get there. Yeah, but she still uses a flare gun that's on the buoy and. Apparently there was some gas leak. Either it was gas or oil. I don't know. It might either that or it could have been leaked out from the whale. Oh, that's right, because there's oil in whale skin, isn't there? I think so. Okay. Well, flammable liquid. She shoot. She's she, she, no, she's at the top of she's at the top of the buoy, kind of like how Roy Scheider was at the top of the mast in. Jaws, she has a flare gun, and she just points it, she's like, fuck you, Pfft. shoots it, and yeah, then burns not, him. No smile, you son of a bitch, or smile, you stupid fish, or welcome to the no, endangered species list, you bastard, or any of that. Nothing can touch smile, you son of a bitch. Yeah, just, just fuck you. Uh, that's yeah, that lame. was, that was kind of lame. But, but even, even if that, even if that, it's obvious the obvious uh, Jaws one-liner thing was was bad. What follows is almost incredible. Yeah, the finish is. I I liked the finish, but it was a little ridiculous. What follows is, I mean, okay, we're we're heavy we're into heavy, heavy spoiler spoilers. territory right now. So we'll say this much: if you've seen, if you're like me and you've seen enough. Shark movies, but no, this isn't shitty. This is not shitty. It's He's, not. It's not shitty. I'm not saying it's shitty, but I am going to say that you kind of have seen. Uh, you've seen a shark movie. You've seen them all. 
Uh, and watch this. It's your own. It's risk. it's got a good. It's got a. It's got a good twist on it. Yeah, I like it. I still thought it was. I th still thought it was scary. I well, not like fully scary, but I loved how they relied on suspense and psychology instead of. I'm gonna say this. Don't. Uh, my my recommendation is don't see this in theaters. My recommend my recommendation is do. I like I liked it. It so. seems it seems like something not not necessarily from a quality standpoint, but from all the shark movies I've seen, I might as well have been watching this on TV on the Sci-Fi Original Channel. Sci-Fi movies don't look this good. This it movie looks amazing. It looks a lot better than those, but it's still it's just I'm just so sick of shark movies. I'm just that's that's all I can say. I if you if you can't get enough of shark movies, then I'd say by all means go check this out. If you want a slightly interesting twist on a shark movie then maybe you might like this but otherwise I'm saying go see it but be prepared for some ridiculous moments yeah otherwise because the stuff with because this like the killing with the shark is a little over the top but it can lead to kind of it can lead to some unintentional laughs which I thought were pretty entertaining and this movie is actually really entertaining it's entertaining in parts but it's also just for me little mundane in parts even for even as intense as the, as being surrounded by a shark is it's just mm, I don't yeah know. I, I, you, I I think you guys kind of get what I'm saying yeah. but like jaws the shark dies yeah in a very in in kind of out of left field way because okay when she she does the jaws style you son of a bitch shoot shoot the flare lights up the oil and everything and, and it's the, the shark jumps out well, I, I think it jumps because it, its dorsal fin gets lit on fire, yep. so it jumps, and it's just it's, this it's whole becoming more on fire. big flaming shark, and it's just, it's in <laughs> slow motion, and you think, holy <laughs> shit. Well, um, you know, good thing you got plenty of water down there, so then it obviously swims back down, and I think it, like, shakes its head a little bit, like, oh, that's it. And now, then yeah, it, now he's really pissed. Now he's super pissed. And so, full-on attack of the um, on the buoy, trying to knock it over. Uh, it, it, Just to like, get her bites, in the water. Yep, it bites onto the grate and like pulls pulls her in. But hey, it's paying it's paying homage to Sharknado now. Yep. Uh, bites it basically bites all the metal it can just to get to her, until. Um, Till it gets its hook, the hook that it had earlier, it it gets hooked onto the buoy itself, and it's he gets stuck. But so he's so relentless and so like determined, he rips out he rips out the hook and like pulls apart his uh, yeah his his, his mouth whole, his whole like part of his jaw is like gone now, and now he's uber uber pissed. But then she gets the idea because because the anchorage at the at the bottom of the buoy and the chain and the chain it's connected to. Uh, it looks like it's all a bunch of shrapnel. And it's everything. a bunch of spikes. Yeah, it looks it looks very sharp and would probably kill it. So she's basically just trying her best to rip the chain last chain off the buoy uh, because the shark ripped off the other two. And the ch the chain I didn't think about how why she was going so fast. The chain would be heavy as shit. The chain is chains are very heavy. So she uses that to basically drop to the bottom, which would hurt like hell. Not because of so much pressure on all, your head. Of all the pressure, yeah. But I guess I guess it's either that or death and the shark is chasing after her and it's like a super intense moment it's dun 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 and then the shark just full mouth eats the uh the anchorage shrapnel it's got spikes coming out of its head and everything and dead and she just looks at it for like a yeah. solid 10 seconds yep she's just sitting under the water like mm, interesting you tried um, killing me mm, yeah uh where's my oxygen again <laughs> And then she washes up shore, and the guy, the guy she met at the... Well, she, she didn't, like, actually make it to shore. She still had to be carried back onto it. Yeah. And she was close to drowning, too. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't spend so much time underwater. Oh, well. Good thing there were no other sharks ever after that. Yep. And... Because the... Oh, coincidentally, the guy who drove her to the beach is the one to rescue her, but then again, he briefly says that he lives right around there. Mm-hmm. And the, the way that she got help 
was luckily through the GoPro that she was talking to, and his son found it. Yep, little message in the bottle. And luckily, a smart kid. Yeah, I thought. I puppy puppy. Blah, 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 blah. I thought for sure that I thought he. I swear, in the opening, it looked like he dropped it for a second, like he just dropped it and ran away. That could be. Oh, that could be a nitpick. Mm, Cinema Sins, look for that. Okay. Um, but yeah, just washes up on shore, and they also try and have this big parallel with her mother. Yeah. Her mother died of insert disease, but I think they might have said it was cancer. I thought she died in childbirth. No. Did you see the hairnet and wheelchair and wrinkled skin? Well, cancer. Okay, sorry. I guess I just related it to when she's like, that island looks like a pregnant lady, and then she no, gets No, the reason that she relates that is because her mom found out she was pregnant with her at that beach. Oh. Yeah, that's why that beach has so much value to her. Okay. Yeah, she, the reason that she goes to this beach in the first place was because she's on vacation with her friend, oh yeah, who's nursing a hangover, ha ha ha. Um... Yeah, she's trying to find this beach because her mom told her all about it and also told her that that was where she found out that Nancy had been conceived. And then as soon as she gets there, oh, those islands look like a pregnant woman. And we're like, um, okay. That was a little that was a little odd, but at least it was at least it was somewhat clever for the setup. And yeah, her mom had her mom died of cancer. It w it's sort of sloppily explained by having the um, having a Skype call with her dad. But yeah, the f the fucking like not overbearing dad, but just like goal driven dad. I hate that stereotype in film because it's just like, oh, you need to do this. You need to do. Ugh. Then again. At least, at least it's brief. At least it's brief. It's not, it's not like, hammed in completely. You almost could completely ignore it, like I did. But, but the parallel that the, that her and her mom have is that they're both fighters. They fought, one yep. through cancer, one, but both against death. One through cancer. One through a great white shark. Yep. And one made it out alive. Mm -hmm. You'd never guess which one. <laughs> uh, I thought that was it wasn't necessary at all but I thought story wise it actually could have been it could have been vital for her character like motivation but then again she's already smart enough as it is she's going to fucking med school oh yeah and she ends up one a doctor one year later yep and she goes back to swimming in Camp Green Lake in, in uh, Texas. No more oceans for her. <laughs> even yeah, if, even funny if I, thing, I thought I thought when I saw this trailer the first time, I thought for sure it was going to be another movie about a surfer who got attacked by a shark and then through through all the courageous power in the world, went back into the waters again. Soul Surfer, part two. That's what I thought. This, really t this time, we can actually exploit Anna Sophia Robb. <laughs> nah. And well, then again, Blake Lively just looks like an older version of her. But, um, yeah, they don't go, like, hammy... They don't go hammy flashback into, like, her past or whatever like 127 hours did. No, they just go like superimposing her cell phone screen onto like the screen. Yeah, that which is Which I thought but, was but weird. That, but that but that didn't last, but and that's also a trend I think that started with The Fault in Our Stars because they just constantly showed pictures of them texting each other. And it was weird because when the guys like, "Oh, are those pictures of your of your are like are those pictures?" and it's like, "Wait a minute, like you can actually see those?" I thought I thought he Well, think of, if you're driving eh, eh. You can kind of, you can kind of get a glimpse. I I understand that, but no, no. I mean, like, I thought he actually was seeing what was like superimposed onto the screen. Like, wait, are we in the future? Is there like some kind of hollow deck here? It would just be like, do 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 do. Oh, pictures. 
Cool. The future. It, that was weird, but oh well. No, that's de- no, that's a new trend. That's going. That's a new direction trend. Okay. Or directing trend. Well. Uh, yeah, but aside from but aside from weird stuff like that, I saw I still found this to be pretty solid. Sure, it's a decent shark flick, but you know what? I'm really done with shark flicks. How many of these things can you possibly make? How many? A lot of bad ones, but a few good ones. And this is one of the few good ones, at least in my opinion. I was I was going in ready to hate this because it looked stupid, because the trailer made it look ridiculous. But since it got a 75% on Rotten Tomatoes, I was like, oh, okay, time to see what this is made of. So went in, I enjoyed my time, I was surprised with what I got, and I actually came out liking it. It was about what I was expecting. I mean, I really wasn't expecting it to be awful, but I also was just knowing it's a shark movie. Seen enough of these, let's do this. (laughs) But you do admit it was one of the better ones, right? It was. It certainly was. uh, You know, I mean, honestly, it it really does make me want to watch 127 Hours again. I haven't seen that in forever. I might check it out once. But yeah, I recommend seeing it, seeing it in theaters because it does look fantastic. It looks really good. And even though the story doesn't beg for a big screen big screen uh, viewing, the direction and style and cinematography of it does. It looks it looks really good. The story is decent and. The, uh, but luckily, the lead character is very likable, and you actually do want to see them make it out alive. <sighs> All right, it's getting pretty goddamn humid here, even though we live in a state that's near Canada. Yeah, we got mosquitoes coming in. Tune in soon to see what we review next. Yep. Later. Jesus, fuck. Bye.